Welcome. Welcome, welcome to the Elk Grove Unified School District Virtual College Fair. We have a killer lineup of institutions for you to hear from this evening. But before I turn it over to them, I do have a couple of housekeeping items for you all. One, this is a webinar, so your camera and your microphone are off. Um, that means our panelists cannot see or hear you this evening. But we do know that you're going to have some questions and they want to make sure um, you get those questions answered. So at any point this evening that you have a question, make sure you note the college or university that you're directing your question to and then also type out your question. That way our panelists will be able to know who you're asking that question of and so that they can answer most appropriately. This is a really fun way to learn about colleges and universities, maybe some that you've been excited to learn about, maybe these are new names to you this evening. Um, but there's also more sessions happening tonight. There's a whole another hour after this. And so I do hope that you'll sign up for additional sessions. This is being recorded this evening, along with all of the programs um, today, and it will be available for playback at strivescan.com slash elk dash grove. So now, uh, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our panelists. Um, first up, you're going to have the opportunity to hear from CSU Sacramento. Take it away whenever you're ready. Hello, everyone. Hopefully you all can hear me. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. I know it's uh, Wednesday, I believe. And um, yeah, so happy to have you guys all here. Um, so I am your Sacramento State Representative. My name is Stephanie Reyes Alcala. I am a former um, Elk Grove Unified School District student and a Sacramento State alumna. So I'm very happy to be here today. Um, let's go ahead and get started. I have a quick little video about our points of pride um, that I definitely want to share with you all. Sacramento State is known as California's Capital University. We are located in the heart of Sacramento, seven minutes away from downtown, and Sac State provides students free transportation using their regional bus and light rail systems. Sac State is one of the largest CSU campuses with over 30,000 students and more than 7,000 degrees awarded each year. The average class size is 33 students. The professor to student ratio is one to 27, allowing students to meet with professors outside of class during their scheduled office hours. Sac State is home to a variety of NCAA Division I sports and over 300 student-led clubs and organizations. This includes intramural sports, academic clubs, fraternities and sororities, cultural clubs, and much more. Sacramento State tuition is among the lowest in the nation, which allows students to take classes, have access to the well, and attend many free on-campus events. We also take pride in our ASI Food Pantry, Housed in the University Union, the food pantry offers non-perishable foods to Sac State students who experience financial hardship and food insecurity. It also provides toiletries and basic necessities for students and oftentimes provides fresh produce. In 2019, Sacramento State unveiled the new science complex along with our new planetarium. The planetarium is open to the public for shows and is also used as classroom space for astronomy courses. Check out the Sacramento State mobile app, available for both Android and Apple. Having so as far as that planetarium goes, that was open in 2019. So for some of you students who are considering going into STEM majors um, in your, co your college educational journey, definitely look forward to that um, here at Sacramento State. Um, Sacramento State does offer several majors, majors to choose from. Here are some, um, criminal justice, political science, business, business administration, um, but there are many more. As far as impaction goes, we only have seven impacted majors that would require you to do a separate supplemental application. So if you have questions about that, um, feel free to reach out to me. Um, but other than that, let's go ahead and move on what is required for admissions at Sac State. So we ask students um, to be high school graduates to earn a A through G um, subject of, with a C grade and higher and to have a qualifying admission index. So for those of you who are part of the Elk Grove Unified School District, you are considered local students. So the minimum GPA that we ask is a 2.5, okay? Um, so this is a very important screen to take a screenshot of if you can. Um, once again, we do have an electronic Hornet buzz that I am going to go ahead and submit into the chat later on for you to refer back to. 
Um, so how exactly and when exactly do you apply? So in order for you to start the fall of 2022, you wanna pay attention to the deadline dates of October 1st through December 15. Not all the CSUs are extending their application deadline to the December 15th date, but here at Sacramento State, we are. I do know that a lot of you students use the californiacolleges.edu system. So if you currently have an account or if you don't, um, definitely recommend that you open up one so that when you do do your Sacramento State application, um, you can merge your courses right onto the application. And lastly, um, you're gonna wanna check out your My Sac State student portal once you create one, because we'll be sending you admissions determination if you decide to go on with us, okay? Um, so if you have questions for admissions, if you want to reach out to us, email us, call us, or just have a virtual one-on-one -on -one, um, communication with an advisor such as myself, you're more than welcome to scan this QR code with your cell phone or take a screenshot. Um, and then you can also set up virtual campus tours or in-person campus tours. We do ask that if you are not fully vaccinated that you keep your um, mask on while um, visiting the campus. And if you do have more questions about COVID, um, then you're more than welcome to reach out to us. And then if you'd like to stay connected, um, you're more than welcome to once again, scan another QR code um, so that we can send you further communication and deadlines from Sac State. And last but not least, we have a Feria de Educación event coming up this weekend. Um, so if you wanted to go ahead and take a picture of this for future reference, we'll be covering things such as how to transfer to um, not to transfer, but how to start to add a CSU or a UC, uh, financial aid and other services. And most importantly, it'll be um, in Spanish for those of you who come from Spanish speaking households. And yeah, once again, my name is Stephanie Reyes Alcala. I am one of your Sacramento State representatives, and I'm so happy that I got to be here with you all today. It's a little bit of time, but um, hopefully this information will help you with your ongoing educational journey. And thank you so much. Stingers up. Bye, y'all. Stephanie, thanks so much to you and um, Sacramento State. Uh, that was a great presentation. Uh, we have five more great institutions to go this evening. And audience, just as a reminder, you can put any of those questions in the Q&A at the bottom of your screen. Just note the college or university that you are um, addressing your question to. So next up, you, I have the opportunity of introducing Sonoma State University. Take it away whenever you're ready. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Let me set up my presentation. All right, so when I start this, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you all for being here today. Um, my name is Aaron Solorio. I am one of the recruitment counselors here at Sonoma State University. Um, and let's get right into the presentation. So for those that don't know, Sonoma State University was established in 1961. We are located in Mona Park, California, which is about an hour north of San Francisco. We are one of the smaller CSU campuses with a student population of about 7,800. Our SSU mascot is the mythical creature, the sea wolf. And we have uh, more than 200 student organizations on campus, ranging from sororities to fraternities to clubs focusing on culture, spirituality, academics, amongst many other things. Within the CSU system, we are ranked number one for two-year graduation rate for transfers and number four for freshman um, four-year graduation rates. In addition, we're, named, we're ranked number one for best housing in the CSU system and number three for most amazing campus arts center. If you're ever in the Sonoma County area, I encourage you to um, look up the Green Music Center uh, live performances to see if uh, there's an artist of interest um, while you're out in the area. We have a 23 to one student to faculty ratio. As um, one of my colleagues likes, likes to say, we have that private university feel for that um, public university price. In terms of academic opportunities, we have more than 45 majors with 70 distinct concentrations. Some of our popular majors include business administration, psychology, early childhood education, kinesiology, sociology, liberal studies, and nursing. We offer undergraduate research. So for anybody that wants to do um, research under the mentorship of a faculty member, um, that's definitely an option for you. And if you're interested in, st in uh, studying abroad, we have more than 64 programs on six different continents. And we are, we are ranked number five in US for, for our study abroad program. If you're interested in, on, uh, if, on staying on campus, we are considered a residential um, camp on campus, uh, uh, housing. 
So we have six residential villages, uh, both suite and apartment style. We have living learning communities, which is just a way for students to deepen connections with other students and really um, make the most out of, their, of the opportunity here on campus. We offer guaranteed housing for our first time first year students and our transfer students. And about 90% of our first year do, students do choose to live on campus. In terms of uh, resources here on campus, some that I would like to highlight with you all today, uh, we have the Advising and Transfer Center, which is really the hub for um, advising when it comes to general education, um, any lower division classes you're taking, or if you're a transfer student, or if, um, if you need clarification for graduation requirements. We have the Dream Center for our undocumented students that provides supports to our students and also their families or any allies. The hub, or how bad, the Educational Opportunity Program is focused for our first uh, generation and historically low income students. And the hub is the, the cultural center on campus and it focuses on really cultivating meaningful conversations and building community within and between uh, diverse cultures. A lot of their programs and events focus on inc inclusivity, equity and community building. Our Learning and Academic Resource Center, also known as LARC, houses our tutorial center um, and our writing center as well. Puerta is one of our, our newer programs on campus, and it was established once uh, SSU became a Hispanic serving institution. And it's a program for Latinx students who want to teach in California. So if you're interested in, in teaching, that is a, definitely a program um, that you should look into. And we also have Seawolf Scholars, which provides uh, current, and foster, current and former foster youth um, additional support and services. We also have financial resources and scholarships. About 70% of uh, students receive some type of financial aid, whether it's FAFSA, the California Dream Act, do grants, scholarships, or work study. And one scholarship that I would wanna, that I wanna highlight is our Wine Industry Scholarship. It awards over uh, $250,000 annually, and the scholarship is two, 2,500 a year, and it is renewable. And this scholarship specifically focuses on supporting first-generation low-income students who have family backgrounds of working in the agricultural sector. Just some steps and deadlines to, to keep in mind. Um, like mentioned earlier, our fall application, or the application does open up on October 1st, so just in a few days. Um, for, for any impacted major here at Sonoma State, the deadline will be November 30th. Any non-impacted major is gonna be uh, December 15th. Our SSU scholarship opens up on November 1st and is due on February 1st. Um, the FAFSA and the California Dream Act also opens up on October 1st and is due March 2nd. So make sure to fill those out. Uh, normally our admission decision is gonna be between December and March. And if you're an SSU uh, student, once you create your portal, um, make sure to use the stay on track guide to take care of any to do's and pay your $50 ERD, which is um, pretty much to secure your spot here at Sonoma State. And just to, to, to wrap up the presentation, feel free to scan the QR code um, in, in case you're interested in setting up a one on one uh, advising appointment with one of our recruiters, or if you just want to stay up to date with anything going on at, at Sonoma State. Um, if you need any support with, with once you start be, once you begin your application, feel free to reach us at the Office of Student Outreach and Recruitment. Once you're admitted as a as an SSU student, feel free to reach out to the Office of Admissions for any questions you may have. If you have any questions pertaining to scholarships or any financial um, questions, feel free to reach out to financial aid. And if housing is an option for or uh, something you're you're considering, make sure to begin doing your research on prices and what house you want to consider. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to, to housing. Thank you. And uh, I hope uh, I hope you have a good application and best of luck. Thank you so much to you and Sonoma State University. Next up, I have the opportunity to introduce to you the University of the Pacific. Take it away whenever you're ready. Good evening, everyone. Welcome parents and students. Let me go ahead and share my screen. So again, my name is Mario Fuentes. I'm an assistant director of admission here at the University of Pacific. We are a private university located in Stockton, California. 
I'm going to start next with a brief video that provides you with an overview. But in Stockton is where all of our undergraduate programs take place the first four years of college. We also have a law school located in Sacramento and our dental school is located in San Francisco. Originally founded in 1851 in Santa Clara, California. We then moved to the Stockton community in 1924. So let me go ahead and play this next video clip for you. Some of us learn best in a small college setting one-on-one -on -one conversations with professors, small class and lab sizes, mentoring relationships and friendships built to last a lifetime. Others want the choices provided by a major university, scores of majors and programs leading to unlimited career paths, an endless menu of activities, student clubs, concerts, social events, recreational and big time college sports. University of the Pacific, California's private university of choice, our students have the best of both worlds. Students are attracted to Pacific's inclusive and caring culture. Professors know each student by name. Pacific also has the opportunities and choices of a major university. 10 schools and colleges offer more than 100 majors and specialized programs, and almost all of our students learn in internship settings. Students can enroll in accelerated programs on our San Francisco, Sacramento, and Stockton campuses to earn advanced degrees in dentistry, law, and pharmacy. These experiences launch our students onto successful careers in business, healthcare, engineering, computer science, pharmacy, arts and entertainment, education, the law, and more. Pacific is ranked among the top 2% of all U.S. universities for alumni salaries. And it all happens on one of America's most beautiful campuses, conjuring up a classic East Coast university, but with a West Coast vibe. Students take day trips to the world-class city of San Francisco, breathtaking Big Sur, Yosemite National Park, and the ski resorts of Lake Tahoe all within reach of our picturesque campus nestled in Northern California. We are the state's first and oldest university. We opened California's first medical school and first conservatory of music. We are California's first university to welcome women. Today, we are one of California's most diverse universities and we continue to innovate with new opportunities for students the personalized education of a small college, the choices of a major university, University of the Pacific, the best of both worlds. All right, so that is Pacific uh, in a snapshot. So what is there to study at Pacific? So at Pacific, we have seven different schools or colleges. But when you apply to the university, you're applying as a whole with a particular major or program of study in mind. Once you are then admitted into that program of study, we will then place you into one of our seven schools or colleges. This is a comprehensive list of all our 80 plus different majors and programs. Again, depending on your major will then dictate which school or college you are a part of. Um, I guess I would say our most competitive and most um, uh, popular programs would have to be our Freshman Advantage program, which is our pre-pharmacy and our pre-dental program. So this is exclusive for high school students straight out of high school that come into these programs. It, it allows the student to take an accelerated case lo workload where they can become that pharmacist or become that dentist in as little as five, six, or seven years. And basically how the program works is if you come in for the five-year program, you would do two years of undergraduate study, and then you would do three additional years of professional graduate level work, either at the pharmacy school or our school in San Francisco for dentistry. You don't apply to which program you want to, uh, you intend to go into, simply apply as a pre-farm or pre-dental student. And then after reviewing your application, the committee will determine which program you qualify for. So let's talk about the application itself. So our early action deadline is November 15th. 
But again, if you are planning to apply for our pre-farm, our pre-dental programs, that is a hard deadline. We do not accept applications for those two programs after November 15th. And it's basically just an early decision for all other programs and majors. Our regular application deadline is January 15th. There's two ways you can apply to Pacific. One is through the common application, and one is through what we're calling the Pacific Thriving Student Application, which is a direct link from our website. The application fee is $55. You're also going to want to include a personal statement and list out all your extracurricular activities. Make sure that you do order transcripts and have those sent to our university as well. And for fall 2022, we are test optional. So completely optional, meaning no SAT or ACT is required to submit with your application. Lastly, this is our contact information. And I will provide my contact information as well as a link to fill out an information inquiry for our university. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much to the University of the Pacific. Next up, I have the opportunity to introduce to you San Jose State University. Take it away whenever you're ready. You might be on mute. Good evening, everyone. My name is Cecilia Del Toro. I'm the International Non-Resident Admission Counselor at San Jose. And I'll be presenting to you about our institution. Uh, to start off, SJSU is part of the CSU system. Some of the CSU campuses have presented and will present tonight. Um, we are the oldest in the system, over 150 years old. We are located in downtown San Jose, considered a big urban campus with 33,000 students, but you're still getting pretty small class sizes, about 29 to 32 students in your classes. Recently, San Jose State was named the number one most transformative school um, in the nation, and we have a short video here for you to watch. At San Jose State, we have a lot to be proud of. We advance creativity and innovation. We explore interdisciplinary research to study wildfires. We reflect our diverse community and are continually working towards equity and inclusion. We strive for justice to advance the public good. We promote success in and out of the classroom. We contribute $4.1 billion to California's economy. We are transformation defined. We are Spartan. So we're very proud of this thing. And very proud to be able to um, have that here in the Silicon Valley. Uh, at San Jose State, we offer over 134 bachelor's degrees with 110 concentrations. Some of our popular majors are business, engineering, computer science, psychology, kinesiology, and the BFA in animation illustration, to name a few. Again, being in the Silicon Valley, we have great opportunities for our students, uh, both with internships and careers. These are some of our top hiring employers uh, that our students, once they graduate, have found jobs at um, or are recruited by these companies. At San Jose State, we have over 450 student clubs in orcs, and anything and everything you could think of. And if there is something that we do not have, you can gather a group of friends and make your own club to be part of that Spartan community. We are also an NCAA Division I campus competing in the Mountain West Conference with eight intercollegiate men's teams and 12 intercollegiate women's teams. If any of you are interested in any of our teams, I definitely recommend checking out our athletics website. We do offer on-campus housing for fall 2022. We are suspending the requirement for freshmen to live on campus their first year, but if you are interested in housing, you have until May 1st to submit your housing application. We also offer a unique housing experience in our international house where you get to live with students from other countries or cultures, um, which again creates that unique housing experience while you're at San Jose State. Now moving on to the freshman admission requirements, similar to the other CSUs that have presented, we are looking that you complete your A through G courses with a C minus or better. You must meet or exceed the minimum CSU eligibility index. And then for San Jose State specifically, we have an additional admission selection process we refer to as impaction. So again, you need to complete these courses, A through G with a C minus or better. 
and know that we are going to be looking at 10th and 11th grade A through G courses when calculating your GPA for provisional admission. Now, if you do have any classes with pass or no pass or credit or no credit during these specific terms, we will not um, calculate those into your GPA, but we will consider those um, to fulfill the A through G requirements uh, for um, admission. So I mentioned the CSU eligibility index, that minimum requirement, which has been mentioned before, is that 2.5. For San Jose State specifically, any student that does not meet that minimum 2.5 will not be considered at all for admission at SJSU. So just keep that in mind if you are applying to San Jose State. And then I also mentioned that additional admission selection process specific to San Jose, that impaction. What it is is that we receive a greater amount of applications from very eligible students than we have spaces to admit. So that creates uh, impaction. So at San Jose State, we are competitive for all of our majors. Again, because we're getting more applications than we have spaces to admit. Um, so just meeting the minimum CSU requirements does not guarantee admission to SJSU. We do publicly post our information about impaction and the historical competitiveness of each major. So I do recommend that you check out our impaction website and remember that impaction does not mean impossible as our impaction criteria does change every year. For fall 2022, what we are going to be looking for is that you have that minimum requirement, the 2.5, the A through G courses, and that um, you meet the minimum requirement for your major. Now, when we are calculating your eligibility index, there will be supplemental factors that will get calculated, uh, which could be um, anything from qualifying for the fee waiver or maybe being first generation. Uh, more information about that is on our impaction page. So what does that formula look like for your eligibility index score? We're gonna take your GPA. We're gonna look at those supplemental factors if you are applying to one of our engineering programs, we are looking at your math GPA, and that will give us the eligibility index score, which we will then look at your major to see if you're meeting the minimum eligibility index score. And if you are, you will be admitted. So again, just having the CSU minimum does not guarantee admission to SJSU, as each of our majors has different um, requirements as we are impacted for all of our majors. For more information, again, check out our impaction website. To wrap up, um, if you are applying to San Jose State, just like any of our other CSU campuses, you'll go to Cal State Apply. It is a one application where you'll select from the 23 campuses. It is a $70 application fee. I do wanna highlight here specifically for San Jose State, our deadline is November 30th. So we do not have an extended deadline. So just keep that in mind. And then lastly, if you have your phone out, uh, scan this for our steps to admission. It's also been dropped into the chat which has all of our admission information as well as uh, additional information about San Jose State. And then I'll leave this here if you want to take a picture, follow us on social media, and here is my contact information. And that is all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Cecilia and San Jose State University. Our next presentation will be from the University of San Francisco. Take it away whenever you're ready. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you all so much for having me. My name is Sergio Maravilla, I use he, him pronouns, and I am an admission counselor with the University of San Francisco. So I'm just to start off, I'm gonna drop my email in the chat and some links. Um, if you have any questions after this presentation, feel free to send me a, an email and I'll be happy to you know, answer any questions. And at the end of this presentation, if you wanna learn more about USF, um, please check out that link for more information. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and we can begin our presentation. Present. Great. So the University of San Francisco is a private Jesuit Catholic university located in the heart of the city of San Francisco. Um, we have a student population of around 6,000 undergraduate students with your average class size being 22 um, and your largest class size being around 70. So uh, other than the city of San Francisco, a big attraction to our campus is our smaller campus sizes, our classroom sizes, just because you're able to get that more personal connection with your professors um, and you can make more personal relationships with your peers in your classrooms as well. Um, we are a Jesuit Catholic University, which sometimes kind of gets people um, a lot of additional questions. What, did, what does Jesuit Catholic even mean? Do I have to be Catholic to attend? Um, essentially, we just want to say that we our values and principles derive from an order within the Catholic Church that really values three main things. 
that is care for the whole person, your mind, your body, and your soul, um, however you define it. We want to provide resources on campus as well as resources in your academics to supplement all those aspects of the holistic person. Secondly, we want to be people for others. You know, we all have our own aspirations. We all have our career goals. Um, at USF, our curriculum is kind of designed to make people think of how exactly do are we placed in our communities and how can we help out each other, which is really nice. And the third one is our commitment to diversity. Um, on this next slide, you'll see that the University of San Francisco is pretty diverse. We're actually more diverse than the uh, city of San Francisco itself, which is pretty shocking sometimes for people to hear. Um, however, just talk more about diversity outside of our racial ethnic backgrounds, but also religious backgrounds as well. Another thing too is students who don't come from a Catholic background are scared that, am I gonna feel included? Am I gonna be uh, supported in this space? Um, yes, you will. I think only 23% of our student population are actually practicing Catholics. And for all those Catholics out there, we do have resources and communities here on campus for you to practice anyone's uh, faith. Uh, but for the large majority of our student population of different background, uh, religious backgrounds or of no religious backgrounds, please note that we do have resources and supportive uh, centers on campus as well. Uh, for example, our university ministry hosts, you know, Catholic retreats and programming, but also interfaith of other religion programming and just general spirituality retreats. And then additionally, we have our intercultural center on campus and our gender and sexuality center on campus as well, just to promote, uh, you know, inclusivity, diversity, and just show our commitment toward our students. Um, additionally, for our uh, we will later learn that USF is kind of expensive university, especially being in the city of San Francisco. However, for all of, all, all of my first generation uh, and low income background students uh, like myself, I just want to say or highlight the percentages down below of 30% of our student population do identify as first generation, meaning their parents not attend a four year university. And then 29% of our student population comes from a family background that makes less than uh, $50,000 a year. Um, so that's really important to me personally, just to know, just to share with students that. Um, USF might seem unattainable. However, there is spaces or are resources on our campus for you to thrive for your next two, four, or six years while on our campus. On this next slide, you'll see this really cute graphic of where exactly we are at in the city. Um, it, I know it's a cartoon, but actually is pretty accurate in regards to our location. To the west, you'll find the financial district where many of our students get highly coveted internships and job opportunities, um, as well as some very uh, popular sport venues with like the SF Giants and the Warriors. Um, to the east, you'll see the Ocean Beach, um, as well as the Golden Gate Park. Golden Gate Park is a beautiful spot if you just want to, you know, get away from the city, get into nature, maybe go for a walk, maybe check out some museums. That's just a street away from the University of San Francisco campus. And then, of course, we have Muir Woods and our Golden Gate Park, uh, or Golden Gate Bridge up to the north of us. Um, being in the city of San Francisco is probably one of the biggest things that make that students, uh, why students choose USF because not only will you be able to learn from a diverse community around you and engage in so many opportunities in the city life, but also you'll learn more about like your own personal interests and how you fit into your own little groups. Um, and also just a little highlight too, with your tuition and fees, you actually have access to the bus system in the US, at, in the city of San Francisco. So if you live off campus or if you have an internship, that's um, highly important and really, really easy to use because they come like every like five or six minutes, depending on the line. Um, additionally, with our academics, we have over 110 different majors, minors, and the concentration students can choose from. This can range from environmental sciences to the fine arts to some of our more competitive programs of nursing and engineering, which are both direct entry, as it says below on the slide. We also have some accelerator programs as well. For example, for anyone who wants to be a teacher in the crowd, we have a, a program where you can get your undergraduate degree as well as your teaching credential all at the same time here at USF. Uh, for all my future law lawyers out there, we do have a school of law associated with USF that has a, a guaranteed admission program for our undergraduate students. So highly uh, recommend students who you know have those kind of interests and want to just accelerate their pathway into their career uh, to do more research into that. Um, and then of course we want to emphasize our Jesuit values within our academics as well. Once again, just being people for others. Um, for a lot of our majors, we have that community engaged learning requirement where you'll actually actually have to be engaged with either the community of San Francisco or the community on campus, you know, not only just talking about it in the classroom, but also applying it into the field. Um, additionally, uh, we do use a common application. So I highly recommend you all to Google common application in the University of San Francisco, and then basically you'll, feel, you'll see a whole application. On the application, I'll ask for a short essay as well as some supplemental questions, depending on what degree you're choosing. For example, with nursing or engineering, 
Um, those will have additional supplemental questions uh, just because they are direct entry. However, for every other major is pretty straightforward. Um, the essay will ask you how exactly you connect to our, our Jesuit values, whether that's from a religious standpoint or a non-religious standpoint. If you can connect with, you know, care for the whole person, being people for others, or your commitment, commitment to diversity, we'll love to hear about it and we want to learn more about, you know, what you can share on that. Additionally, we require your unofficial or official transcripts, you know, just to review your grades. And then also it's really important to note that we are test optional. So if you want to take your SAT or ACT, um, you can totally do that and submit it for any merit-based scholarships, but it's not required. And the same thing goes for our letter recommendation as well. Not required, but um, highly encouraged if you want to submit it. And then of course, want to acknowledge the deadlines down below. If you want to apply early action, early decision for fall 2020 enrollment, the deadline is November 1st. And for regular decision, it'll be January 15th. Um, so once again, I want to thank you all for taking the time to you know, come and listen to all these amazing universities. And if you have any questions, once again, please feel free to reach out and I'll be happy to answer. Thank you all. Sergio, thanks so much to you and University of San Francisco. Our final presentation tonight will be from UC Merced. Take it away whenever you're ready. You might be on mute. I'm sorry, it's my screen shared? Sorry. Sure is, yes. Okay, awesome, great, wonderful. So welcome everyone, uh, my name is Timothy Ford and I serve as the Northern California Regional Admissions Representative for UC Merced. Uh, we are the newest UC campus um, in the beautiful UC system, uh, founded just a little over 16 years ago and our campus was born to increase access to UC eligible applicants who meet our selection criteria. We're located in the heart of the San Joaquin Central Valley, about two and a half hours from the Bay Area, about two hours from Sacramento, and about an hour and a half from our majestic neighbor to the east, Yosemite National Park. So we're pretty much in the center of everything. Very easy to get to our city within um, a few hours. This is what our campus looks like. We are experiencing remarkable growth. Um, we just uh, completed our four-year expansion project known as the Merced 2020 Project. So everything that you see on the right side of the screen was completed over the past four years. Uh, we've added new residence halls, computational laboratory buildings, a beautiful outdoor swimming pool that you see right there. And we're gonna continue to grow for years to come. Ultimately, we will become the largest UC campus when it's all said and done. 99% of our students do come from California, so we're first and foremost committed to our California residents. Almost an even split across the board in terms of where in California our students are coming from, as you can see in this map here. A little over 9,000 make up our population of students, making us the smallest UC campus in terms of population of students, providing that intimate feel that's very common amongst private schools, but also the value of being a large public research institution. We're also proud of the fact that over 73% of our undergraduate students identify as first gen, the first in their families to go away to college. Our students have access to over 200 clubs and organizations, everything from cultural based organizations, religious organizations, special interest groups. And if there's a club that's coming down on our campus, it's very easy to get one started. All it takes is three students, your mission statement, and you can kickstart a new organization, not just for yourself and your peers to enjoy, but also for future generations to enjoy. And that pretty much reflects the pioneering spirit of UC Merced, our students helping to shape the university's growth for future generations. Over 700 events occur annually on our, on our campus. Everything from small scale events to our capsterical comedy nights, sold out poetry slam, our treat, treats and beats Halloween carnival, our fabulous city drag show during Pride Week, and our most anticipated event of the year, Calcella. That's our music festival that occurs in the spring, Calcella. Um, and pretty much uh, we call it that because of the neighboring cows in our neighborhood also enjoying that great music that our artists are putting forth. Uh, we do compete under the NAIA umbrella when it comes to athletics um, in men and women's basketball, cross country, soccer, and volleyball. And if you don't want to play competitively, we do offer a number of club sports as well as intramural sports. And of course, outdoor adventures is the norm as well for our students to experience at UC Merced. We offer over 26 undergraduate majors, superb majors that are housed in three schools, our School of Engineering, Natural Sciences, and our School of Social Sciences, Humanities, and the Arts. The most applied two majors are going to be Biological Sciences, Computer Science and Engineering, Psychology, Management and Business, Econ. However, one thing to note is that none of our majors, including ones that I just mentioned, are impacted. 
which means that we will not factor in your major during our selection process. And if you choose to switch majors, it's very easy to switch majors once you are admitted to the university. Yosemite is in our backyard. We are the only UC campus to have ties to the National Park System. And we offer a two-year co-curricular program where our students can work in the park as leaders. They're learning how to advocate for the environment, making informed ethical decisions, and also taking part in a two-year co-curricular, which includes an internship program during the summer months where students are working as assistant park rangers. Upon successful completion of this program and graduation from UC Merced, our students are then guaranteed any job within the national park systems nationwide. Research is the hallmark of the UC experience, and we're very proud of the fact that this past year, UC Merced students had a, a part in the Mars 2020 mission. And many of our students conducted critical tests through our tribology, tribology department and laboratory to conduct critical tests on the mobility of the rover, which made this mission a successful mission, amongst others who were actively involved in this. We like to empower our students to uh, pursue student support services. Um, in addition to your academic advisors, you have access to a number of additional support resources, including our Fiat Lux Scholars Program, which is our version of EOP at UC Merced. We have our guardian scholars for those who come to the foster care system on undocumented services for students. And then we have campus-wide resources, including our counseling and psychological services, CAPS, student health services, as well as accessibility services for students requiring accommodation needs. Admissions and financial aid to UC Merced. Our average 50 percentile range this past year for admitted students was between 3.4 to 4.0. That is the middle 50 percentile range, which means that we did admit students with slightly lower than a 3.4, as well as those above a 4.0. And our admit rate is 87 percent, making us the highest UC campus with the highest admit rate. And we're proud of that number because it shows our commitment to providing access and equity and also for the fact that we have the room and capacity to admit at higher rates than many of our sister campuses can. Um, UC admission requirements, A through G requirements must be completed, 3.0 minimum GPA, uh, California residents. SATs or ACTs no longer factored into the selection for students for admission or scholarship purposes. And then our application timeline is August 1st. The application is open every year for seniors. Filing period is November 1 through November 30th, 1159 p.m. is the deadline on November 30th. One application, you can apply to as many campuses as you like, and each campus that you select is $70 per campus. The waivers are available. Finally, financial aid, you can afford UC Merced. 91% of our students do receive financial assistance at UC Merced, with our average gift aid being around $18,186. So make sure you file your FAFSA or California GMAC applications by March 2nd. And I'm going to conclude there to allow for questions, but my contact information is listed there. And I'm going to also put in the chat um, additional information if you'd like to stay connected with us. Um, and thank you so much for your time this evening. Thank you, Tim, and thank you to UC Merced. Now I'd like to invite all of our panelists to turn back on their cameras for a very quick um, question and answer period. So um, we're going to go in the same order that you presented. And the question is, what would you like students to remember about your institution? And we'll start with um, CSU Sacramento first. Hi, everyone. Um, just, just remember that we are a large campus with a small classroom feel. Um, we are located in the capital of California. Location matters when it comes to internships, when it comes to networking. So definitely remember, large campus, small classroom feel, and we're located in the capital of California. Yeah, I think for me, it would be, you know, just uh, just know if you come to Sonoma State, you will be well supported. There is a lot of resources for y'all to um, take advantage of um, just to build that social capital, but to make sure that, um, you know, you feel welcome, supported, and that, you know, Sonoma State will be the home for you for the years that you will be here. I'll go next. So University of Pacific, we are a small private university with the amenities of a large scale university division one school. Um, our average class size is 23 students. Our student to professor ratio is 14 to one. 
Uh, for San Jose State, again, highlighting that we are the number one most transformative and really um, our, our diversity, the opportunities we offer our students here to be successful while they're completing their degree as well as after, um, and really giving back to our community and being involved in our community. Um, so that's something we would definitely want you to remember about us. Uh, for the University of San Francisco, I'd probably highlight the location. Um, your college experience is going to be very unique and transformative wherever you go, so why not do it in the city of San Francisco? For UC Merced, I want to highlight the access to research opportunities. Um, you can start and pursue research as early as your first year, which is very uncommon amongst a lot of large public research institutions, and that's due to the size of our campus. And I'd like all of you to remember these lovely professionals who are really here to help serve you and answer all of your questions throughout the college search process. They want to connect with you, so please don't hesitate to, to ask them questions that you might have. Thanks so much for joining us this evening. As you close out, there'll be a quick five-question survey. We do hope that you'll provide us with some feedback. Um, all the sessions tonight were recorded and will be available for playback at strivescan.com slash Elk Dash Grove, and there's still one more hour of sessions for you to enjoy. So have a great one, everyone. Bye bye.